Kara with Salikek as he took the debate to Portland to change it viewpoint of course it need to melt down the snowflakes so guys without any further ado let's get down to the video and check this out america is the greatest country ever to exist not even close what what country would you say is the greatest most productive most accepting most generous most benevolent yes we take in half the world's immigrants every single year how is this not accepted what does that have to do about not being accepted? Who are you? My name is Charlie Kirk and I love America. Why are you there? Because I love talking with people I disagree with. What have you done for your country? Started an organization that's now on a thousand plus campuses to save the greatest culture and country ever to exist. Hires vets. And hires vets. And hires vets. And I've had thousands of hours of conversation about these ideas. What's with the cameras? Is it necessary? Well, considering I've been assaulted, followed, stalked, and had things thrown at me, the greatest protection I have is cameras. Is it's a public space. Okay. One, one second, I want to wrap this up. And it's all good. But what country would you say is greater than this one? Well, I just said, I mean, we take in hat we definition of great I mean we are the you say that the United States of America has always done has always made the greatest decision because nobody's perfect right no I never said America was a perfect country ever nor have we we've made a lot of mistakes any other country has done anything great no 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 that's not what I've said why do you go to that extreme because from an objective analysis objective analysis correct of world history hello how are you yeah yeah We are the most creative, the most accepting, the most benevolent, the most generous, most forward-thinking and productive country ever to exist. We are a country that sent 37,000 of our own citizens to die on the Korean Peninsula so South Korea could exist, and we asked for nothing in return. No country's ever done anything close to that. We sent a mil- Reading history. What did I, how is that not true what I just said? No, but what, what am I saying that's untrue? Americans gave away $500 billion to charity last year, voluntarily. We take in half of the world's immigrants, half. Do you know how those trusts work? No. Do you know that only 5% of the money that you put into a non-profit or a charity even has to be used? So mo- is more than they make on interest, you realize. So mo- most charities and most foundations will use 90 plus percent of the, the net assets they get every single year. What? Now you can look at the IRS. You can look at the IRS website. I understand what I'm saying might bother you, but we're also the most accepting, least racist, most diverse, multiracial country in the world by far. We've been in. Okay, how? Look at the United. We take in half the world's immigrants every single year. So. Most America is not living in poverty. Yes, really. We're the richest country in the world, by far. We have an American middle class, which is a uniquely American concept. You ever walk down the street and seen all the homeless people? You Excuse me, I grew up in a gang, gang infested neighborhood. So you want to talk to poor people, I'm talking, and we're talking to you from a perspective of people that have experienced you, you, you know that America's poor are actually in the richest 1% water? in the world. A remarkable amount. The richest 1% of what? Of people in the world. No, what I'm saying is that a very poor person in America is relatively extraordinarily rich by world standards. Yes. Why would you say that? Because they have access to air conditioning, medical care, cable television, Wi-Fi, well, transportation. Have access to medical care? Uh, Ninety plus percent. Bankruptcy? What is Medicaid? Tell me what Medicaid is. Medicaid. Forty-five million poor Americans have access to health care through a Medicaid. They reach the median level of income, but they can't afford their medical bills. They can go on Medicaid. That's what Medicaid is for. How many people are on Medicaid? How many? 45 million. We have okay. a safety net for poor people. It's called Medicaid. Okay. Run Why by state exchanges. In Oregon? Because yes. Well, that's because of a Democrat governor and a Democrat mayor and a Democrat supermajority in the House and the Senate. You show me an American ghetto, I'll show you a Democrat in control. Philadelphia, Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland. The prosperous states, the states that. Blame Democrats? Yes. Yes. There hasn't been a Democrat governor of Oregon since 1982. I mean, a Republican governor of Oregon since 1982. Is that a great time? Is 
because because Republicans generally. What about progressive? What what is what is? Progressive you mean party. socialists or Marxists? Socialists? Are you gonna call me a communist next? I'll time? call you a Marxist. Yeah. Yeah. About anything outside of your bubble. What do you think about Karl Marx? Karl Marx. Karl Marx. Bingo. <laughs> yeah, I mean he 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 is the author of basically everything the progressive movement believes. Karl Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto. Have you? Because the progressives argue for everything that is democratic socialism. So Bernie Sanders, who is the criminal justice reform, I believe in criminal justice reform. You and I could agree with that. Do you do you believe in free education? No. I mean, it depends. Is it state education? Do you believe? I mean, are you talking about private education? Do you believe? Where do you draw the line? High school education is free, right? No, it's not. You pay property taxes. It's, tar- it's far from okay. free. You okay. pay a lot more in property taxes than you'll ever get out of your local high school education. <laughs> Nothing is free. Everything is paid for by somebody at some point. <laughs> the most prosperous parts of the world and in this country are more in more center-right conservative Republican leadership. Thank you for the conversation. So explain to me then the, so the, 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 the how are you is it helping explain. kind of okay. so this for, for, first and foremost no children were caged so under this administration they were caged under the Obama administration <laughs> no, I didn't ask that question you obviously just turned it into a political thing pushing it on Obama you avoided the question okay, and pointed so, the finger at Obama I didn't ask no, if Trump did it you, you said child I asked caging. are they in there they're yes not they're no? not in cages they're not they're not in prisons right now they're not in prisons no they're not being held they're being separated from the people that brought them across the southern border and you were blaming this on Obama. Why? Again, Why? you use caging. There's Why? no one in cages right now. I'm sorry. I asked a question and you defer to Obama. Because he was I the only president that put children in cages. Trump did not. You're getting, getting really upset, aren't you? So ask, let me ask a question. What what agency goes after child sex traffickers most vehement? According to you, it's ICE. And according to all independent audits as well. All of them. Yeah. All or nothing is a fallacy. Well, there's no one that has found that to be untrue. Okay, well, I'll make sure to investigate that myself. I, so I find it very telling that you get so angry so quickly. No, I did get angry, got assertive. Yes, you assertive? Oh, that's called assertive. It's very interesting. Do, do I'm you, curious about the deflection to Obama when I didn't even bring up Trump. No, you brought up cages, and there's only one president where kids were in cages. So that that's brand new, huh? That's never happened before. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the question is. Still... You're not sure the question is meaning that children have never been in prison except between 2008 and 2016? Do, do you think that we should test? 16? Do you think that we should test when someone brings them across the border whether or not that it's their parents or not? Do you think we should ask? Do you think we should test? Test? Yeah, in case that they're being child trafficked across the border. Well, if they're being trafficked across the border, it's because we're bringing them in. What do you mean by what? How are why we would they? Why would they be? You didn't answer my question. You avoided my question. No, I asked the question in return. Yeah, by asking a question, you avoided my question. That's a tactic. That's a male dominant tactic. Male? Do- what does what does that mean? Being a male have to do with anything? I mean, you're you're issuing it right now. What do you mean? Yeah, let me explain. When you're here presenting to us, right? And someone asks you a question. And in a very political way, you deflect the question with a question. You didn't answer the question. So basically, you've got nothing to say except I got political a lot rhetoric. To say. I got a lot to say. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Such as our president's doing an extraordinary job. Lowest ever Hispanic unemployment rate, lowest ever black unemployment rate. So this is uh, tens of thousands this is of a political statement for Donald Trump. Then. Being arrested. Well, I love, I love you the You are here making a Trump speech. Am this I? is a pro-Trump speech for you. This has nothing to do with genders well, it has or a lot. children. I'll talk about anything you're you sitting want to talk here about. telling me how much a, you love thank Trump. Thank you. Have a great day. God bless you. I'll pray for you. Oh my goodness, that will help a lot. Prayer, will... prayer is a powerful thing. Yes, it is. It has done horrendous things to this planet. Prayer has done horrendous things to this it planet. It has through Christianity and through a lot of other religions. Oh, Narrow-minded religions have caused a lot of pain and suffering on this planet. More people have died over the last 100 years under the guise of Marxism and statism than any other ideology, not even close. 
more people have 100 died. million people died under communism in the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. 100 million? Yeah, 60 in uh, Mao's China, mm -hmm. 30 in Stalin's Russia, I mean, 2 million in Pol Pot's Cambodia, at least 200,000 in Cuba. I can keep going. I'm not preaching communism here. No, but I'm or saying anything. more You're people have died under statism. You're telling me nothing about children. You're telling me how much you support Trump I mean, and, I, and how much communism I'll talk sucks. about whatever you want to talk about. I, it's your conversation. So what do you I believe? Know. I believe that there's a remedy for situations and not a political battle. I believe that if we work together and open our minds instead of militarizing ourselves, we could come up with a solution. Isn't talking how we come to solutions? Sure, but getting mad and making political stances on who you love and what the president's doing that's so great and what no. the communists are doing so bad is not a conversation, it's a statement. Well, I'll have a, a conversation when I didn't have a conversation. Awesome. Maybe we could have a conversation in the history book sometime. How about what? Maybe we could have a conversation in the history building sometime. Yes, history An intelligent will, conversation. History will tell us that when government grows too big, people suffer and die.